Hello bitches, welcome back to another draw with me. Today we are going to be working on, or I mean, I'm gonna be working on the second to last page of this sketchbook in which I asked you all, what should I do for the last two pages of my sketchbook? And one of you, Donovan Silva, recommended that for my last two pages to draw something that's out of my comfort zone, something that you might have a strong opposition towards or something that makes you feel uneasy, a true artistic expression of breaking through a literal obstruction within one's mind. So I decided to take on Donovan's recommendation for my second to last page of my sketchbook and something that I really, I'm not comfortable with working with and drawing with, I guess, is watercolor. As you can see here, this is my Koi watercolor palette and which has not been touched since high school. I, I think the last time I really used this was for my CalArts a sketchbook and you can see how fucking disgusting it looks right now. But watercolor has always been one of my weak spots, I guess, because it's a very loose medium that you kind of have to just accept wherever it goes and just make art with the spontaneity of it. And I know that that's why some people love watercolor, but for me, I hate watercolor and I also fucking hate drawing cars, vehicles, or anything that's just very, I guess, technical and rigid. So today I decided to make myself hate everything that I'm drawing by using watercolor to draw or paint vehicles. And before I proceed any further into this little hellhole of things that I absolutely despise drawing, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making it a little bit more bearable to work with. So for any of you new folks here, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators or people who just want to discover a new hobby. You can explore new skills or deepen your already existing passions or just get lost in creativity and have fun. And for me personally, I suck at watercolors and maybe some of you all out there do too. Maybe if you're an illustrator more so than a colorist of any sort, watercoloring might be something you wanna be getting better at. And at the end of this video, I will introduce a video to you all who wanna improve on your painting skills just like I need to. Anyway, getting back with the truth of today's video, I wanted to discuss the hot, juicy, steamy topic about why I no longer love doing art. And I just thought it would go hand in hand with the fact that I am drawing something that I don't really love drawing, which is vehicles and technical stuff like houses and buildings. And painting them in a medium that is not really my favorite either. So I just thought they would go hand in hand with each other and I apologize in advance if this whole thing already just seems very cynical and negative. So one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this is because one of the messages or comments that I still get from time to time are regarding people and their fallout with their love for art and doing it and you know feeling guilty about feeling that way and not being so sure about how to handle a situation when you no longer feel passion or love towards this thing that you thought could have been your career or your future. So my biggest piece of advice towards anyone who actually just really does not want to draw and can't really bear to pick up a pencil or a pen to draw in their sketchbook, iPad, or whatever it is, I just think that you really need to not draw then because I went through a very similar situation during probably my second or third year of CalArts where I just did not feel that hot passionate love or interest for drawing art animation for a moment in time and the way that I really was able to resolve that conflict was to literally stop drawing unless if I really had to, like, which is for school assignments or my school projects, because I did have to still make student films and stuff like that, but I kind of just stopped drawing completely for my own passion or hobbies and interests, and I only really ever drew or animated stuff for school, and that sounds very sad and cynical and negative, but it has helped me in the long run, I believe. 
Prior to my days of posting consistently on Instagram and YouTube, which was honestly just a few years ago, I used to post a lot on DeviantArt and Tumblr. And for those of you who actually followed me back then, you maybe might have noticed that I just kind of decided to stop posting and didn't post anything anymore within like my second to third year of CalArts. That's actually where I kind of stopped posting on social media because that's when I really stopped feeling the hot, intense passion for creating personal art. So the reasons why I personally felt this way and maybe you might feel this way too is because I felt just burnt out with every aspect about creating art. I felt burnt out from the idea of having to constantly be impressing somebody else, including myself, with something that I had to create with my hand and brain and heart. And I was also kind of tired of just feeling like I needed to love what I am doing all the time because I feel like artists, you know, have this perspective, like other people have this perspective of artists where it's like, oh, you must love what you do because this is something that's so creative and coming from your heart. And I felt like I felt this pressure that I had to love everything that I was doing. And honestly, I did not at that time. So I feel like I needed to be honest with myself and be like, okay, this is just not really vibing with me right now. Maybe I shouldn't force myself to love something that I don't feel like I love right now. So that and along with the fact that just at school you were just constantly making art all the time for your student film, your assignments, your projects, that by the time you get back to your dorm room at night, the last thing I really wanted to do was just draw some more because I've been like already pooped out with drawing throughout pretty much the whole week. So then you might be wondering, what was I doing then throughout this whole time that I was not drawing for myself? What was I doing instead? Well, during this time was actually when I felt like for the first time in almost my whole life, I actually decided to spend that time living out my life and going to see things, travel, spend time with friends and engage in conversations with people that I normally would not have conversations with, like meeting new people that are not necessarily artists and understanding what their life is like with their personal hobby or career that is not art related. And the way that this kind of just happened for me was just meeting new people through my friends who were not artists. So I kind of got to know people beyond just the art and animation industry. And after I met my boyfriend as well, I definitely was more introduced to people from other career backgrounds as well. And I feel like when I made more friends who were just not necessarily artists or animators, it really opened up my eyes more to just the fact that there are people out there who feel the same thing that I do about art, but towards other things. So I remember during one of my internships at Disney, I actually ended up asking one of the veteran artists there a question about what do you do when you're not creating art for Disney or like for yourself? Like, what do you do when you're not looking at art? And his answer was just like, I just like looking at furniture. That was it. And I don't know why it was such a simple, random answer, but it was just very eye opening and refreshing for me to hear someone who is so notable for what he has contributed towards this huge animation industry. And his art is amazing, in my opinion, but I don't want to reveal the name just for confidentiality reasons. But just hearing about their interest towards something that is so simple and seems mundane was just very refreshing to me because it made me feel a little bit more validated that the things that you have interest towards outside of your main passion, hobby, or career doesn't have to be anything profound or related to your career. I also just feel like we are in a society now where everything that you have an interest or hobby in has to immediately turn into your career. And I don't think it has to be that way. And I feel like coming to this realization towards keeping certain things as a hobby and certain things as a career became more apparent to me. And unfortunately, I feel like I just reached to that point where art has officially become my career and not so much my hobby. So first, I'm just gonna talk about why I personally no longer love doing art, and then I will circle back to what I think you should do about it if you feel similar to the way that I do. And to get straight to the point, I feel like I officially no longer love doing art 
the way that I used to. I feel like as a child and teenager, there was a certain excitement I had towards creating art. It was one of those things that I looked forward to the most out of everything else in life. But in a way, I think there were some drawbacks to that because as a kid, I kind of honestly chose drawing in my sketchbook or on my intuos back at the time over family time or time with friends and just going out and living life. I feel like I always prioritized art over everything else, but I felt like art and animation at that time was just this really bad itch I had to scratch and understand completely in order to move on to other things in life. And while it seems sad that I no longer love art as much as I used to, I think it's kind of a good thing because I feel like right now at this point in my life, I feel more open to everything else out there that the world has to offer more than I've ever had as a kid. And that doesn't mean that I hate doing art, that I hate it. It's my job still, obviously, and I still have a passion towards it as my career. But like, you know, for the fact that I have to draw things and, you know, draw and sketch things, I don't think that I love it as much as I used to. Because what I realized over time at the end of the day is that art is honestly just another form of communication and animation in itself is also a form of communication through film. And what I've always liked about animated films and shows is that they always seem to have a very strong message that they want to communicate towards the audience. There's a theme that they want to get across. And that is what I love about art and animation. And I still plan to continue creating art and creating animated films. But nowadays, it's not so much for the fact that I want to draw well or I want to draw something cool. Like I no longer have that hard, intense spark towards drawing in itself, but I now have more of an intense spark for the fact of what I can say with what I am drawing and what I can do for others with the fact that I can draw. So I guess it's more like drawing is now my tool for something else that is now my hobby, which is more so communicating stories, messages towards others. And it's not so much for the fact that I get to draw, it's more for the fact that I'm getting good at something that is helping me communicate this idea towards others. And some might say something like, well, don't you still love art then if you still love doing that? And like, yes, I do still love what art can do for me, but the thing that I just no longer really love is how good I am at laying down a certain line on a piece of paper, I guess. Now I kind of care more about what the lines that I draw can do for people, I guess. Maybe I'll be better at explaining this in the future because I'm still in the midst of realizing shit in life. So what should you do if you're in a similar situation that I was in? I honestly think that a tangible recommendation that you can try is to just take a break away from art or whatever it is that you are debating on continuing on with and you can take a break for three months i think three months is just a good time for you to really feel out what life would be like without this thing and you still have a chance to resume back to it soon enough and when I took a break from it, it was kind of unintentional. It was almost for a year or two that I did not really draw any personal art for myself. So if you're a student or if you're actually still working as an artist, yes, I still think that you should continue on with the main thing that is sustaining you. Like, let's just be a little bit realistic and know that you should not completely quit everything because if you are doing art as your job or you're a student that is doing art, I think you should still just continue on with it to just, you know, either complete your degree or still be able to pay for yourself, whatever it is, unless if you are able to switch your major and you know for sure that you want to like, sure, go ahead, but it's all under your discretion. And then during that time span that you are not doing the thing that you're taking a break from, I would really try to try all of the things that you've ever been interested in and see what sticks. Because during the time that I really was not doing personal art, I was traveling, I was really spending time with friends and meeting new people. I was journaling. I was 
also editing vlogs and videos and really getting into video editing. So just things like that is a perfect time for you to explore all the other things that you've been interested in and see if art comes back to you naturally. Like I wouldn't try to push away art if it's trying to come back to you. If you really feel like you wanna draw and it's really satisfying to draw within this break, like embrace it, just let it happen because it's supposed to happen. And the point of this is to just really see if there was something else out there that you wanted to do or not. And if it is still art that you wanna continue, then amazing. So what I learned from my personal journey is that while I still enjoy drawing, I don't love it in the way that I aspire to just be known for being good at drawing. One day I would either like to direct my own project of some sort, whether it's a book or running a show or film. Drawing, I don't want it to be my main thing. I just want it to be a helpful tool to help communicate my message more so than being the main thing. I really like how my YouTube and Instagram have been a way to help spread positive messages to you all. And I think that is eventually my goal is to eventually merge that with a bigger project that hopefully I can someday lead and the medium for that, whether it be a film, show or book is to be determined. Anyway, thank you for watching me struggle with creating vehicles with watercolor. Definitely not my strong suit, but I also don't think the sketchbook was meant for watercolor to be put on it, but whatever, you live and you learn. I don't think this page turned out as terrible as I anticipated it to be, so that's what matters, I guess. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Seriously, don't feel guilty or bad if you feel like you're having this ongoing debate in your head about continuing art or whatever it is or not. But yeah, before I end this video, I would like to thank Skillshare once again and share this video. So Skillshare has plenty of classes that you can choose from, from animation, writing, illustration, business, and lifestyle. But today I'm going to show you all a watercolor class because it's not my forte. And maybe if any of you all are also struggling with this, this class can help you too. So this class is called Watercolor in the Woods, a beginner's guide to painting in the natural world by Rosalie Heiselet. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but anyway, this is about painting nature and just outdoor things with watercolor, and it's going to help you really just bring in realistic textures and layering techniques to your watercoloring skills. And you know, I have no watercoloring skills other than just coloring with it, but it would be really nice to just eventually get better at it when I feel like it, I guess. So maybe some of you all might feel the same way, and as an animator or illustrator who tends to be more on the graphic side of things, it is really nice from time to time to get in touch with the more organic side of art. So the great thing about Skillshare is that they're always launching new premium classes with no ads because they want you to stay focused and follow wherever your creativity wants to take you. So they are offering all of you my first 1000 subscribers to click the link in the description box below to get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. So please take advantage of this opportunity as this is going to be one of the few last ones I'll have for a while. So I highly encourage you to take it and run with it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay wholesome, bitches.